Hi, this is my music archive and I'm making this video to demonstrate how I can move this music hundreds of thousands, well, thousands of hours of music on DAT tapes to FLAC files on my computer using DDS drives. So, these are DAT tapes. This, for example, Guided by Voices. This is a 180 minute DAT tape. The DAT medium appeared back in the 90s. It's a 4 millimeter helical scan tape digital music and it was really really finicky those of you who have dats who are watching this video know about dat tapes well now in 2011 it's an obsolete uh, medium it's obsolete and most people don't even have dat decks to play these back in that's the problem I've got tons of these look at this Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop at the Children's Theater 1988 I, t I put the uh, lavalier microphone on Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop, that's a recording of that. These are recordings that people got by nefarious or legitimate means. These are all these recordings on on uh, on CDs. Here's the Crash Dummies, a local group, wonderful guys. I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of stuff here, but a lot of guys that became active in this music trading gig back in uh, back in the 90s, there was a group called Dat Heads. And Dat Head started out as sort of Grateful Dead, Fish, uh, Dave Matthews, kind of hippie music. But they always encouraged live, live recording of their concerts, and they, they allowed it to be traded freely. Well, there's also a lot of other recordings that go around on bootleg format. These are all bootlegs on CDs that are commercially available, not in the United States, but commercially available somewhere. These are all from Shinjuku in, in Tokyo. And um, anyway... This is my live music archive, and the topic of this video, though, is how to get this music from these tapes onto FLAC files. And FLAC files are a lossless, compressed file that is really popular among people who care about the quality of stuff that's being traded. So here's what I have set up. First of all, let me show this. This is a DDS drive. Don't worry about uh, This is a DDS drive that uh, originally was made for... Um, originally was made for archiving just data and uh, this is a CTD8000RS, a Connor DAT drive. They're available on eBay. This was probably about 25 bucks shipped and that's why I like this because I'm kind of a cheapskate and I'm able to do this really cheap. Here's what I set up. So about 10 years ago I set up a system um, like a lot of guys did, a DDS drive this is another Connor drive. Now this Connor drive happens to have the, it has to have the audio uh, firmware installed on it. And um, once you've done that, you've got to have the appropriate connectors and a SCSI card uh, in, in a PCI slot in your computer. This uses a, a regular ribbon cable. This is with single setup. I'll show you a dual setup later. Now, what I did was I got a DDS drive. I hooked it up to a PC. And I got a program that so many people get called Dat2Wave. It was written by these guys, Computal or something, back in the back in the 90s. And uh, it's a command line program. It's really, really basic, but it works really well. And here's how you do it: you set up a um, you set up a batch file to run it. This one happens to be called Connor Bat. Here's what the batch file looks like. In the batch file, I have uh, I just set the color. Um, I happen to be calling it a Sony, but it's actually a Connor. Here it is, the Connor CTD8000 control set. This is the batch file that runs the program called DAT2Wave. And this is the line that runs it, DAT2Wave, and this uh, tells you, this names the file. This, this is the location of the drive, happens to be on 2 colon 4. That's the location on the SCSI, uh, on the, it's a SCSI ID. This rewinds the tape, kicks in error correction, this makes a new track with every start ID. This plays the tape to the end of the tape before stopping. And pause, that leaves the window open. So let's try it, watch this. This is what Dat2Wave looks like when it starts up. There, you can hear the drive spinning up. It's setting the drive in audio mode. It's rewinding the tape to the beginning. Now, this looks simple, but I worked for ages to get this thing to work and unless you get exactly the right um, 
SCSI ID and you get things set up just right with the jumpers on the back of the drive, the part of the physical setup of the drive, it won't work. There it goes. This, it's dumping the DAT to the hard drive in a raw form. Look at this. There's the, there's the program time, there's the date that it was recorded, uh, there's the sampling rate, and there's the SCMS status, 1-1, one, one, meaning uh, I think that means it can't be copied. 0-0 zero, zero means it can be copied in infinitely, and then the, I think there's one other setting that means it can be copied once. Anyway, this is my um, tape of the McPunk Brothers at the Wildwood Bluegrass Festival um, in 1999 in Kelowna, Iowa. My master. Anyway, let's turn this off. Okay, that to wave is a perfectly good program, but you think, there's got to be more, right? Well, uh, two or three years ago, I started a Yahoo group called Dat Heads to Wave, and it is just what it's called. All these guys from Dat Heads, uh, I thought, well, they've got tons of Dats in their homes, and they've got to get them transferred over to Wave files, and then from Wave to FLAC or MP3, whatever your flavor is, right? So I started this news group on Yahoo, and this guy named Wayne uh, enrolled in it or signed up for it, and he... he uh, he wrote a program called Windat. Well, here's Windat. I'll start up Windat. Windat is a lot more uh, feature. There's a lot more features in Windat. Oh, look at this. It's got a GUI. Okay, let's select our drive. SCSI bus, tape zero. There it is. The archive Python. And this is the firmware version. 01931XXX5AC. Anybody who does these DDS drives and goes through this process knows about this firmware. Anyway, that firmware is necessary to use this. So I've selected the drive, and then I call it, I name the wave, and I can put it on my hard drive, name it, blah, blah, blah. I can start the read, rewind, and then here the error messages will show up and stuff like that, and here the status will show up. There's the sample rate, all that. It works pretty well, and um, there were two or three different versions that came out. And um, we were sort of happy with it. It never really worked for me that well. Uh, it didn't. One thing it didn't do is it didn't read tapes that were in 32K LP mode. LP mode is double the time. It's 32K 12-bit instead of 16-bit, and it uh, it makes a it makes a 120-minute a 60-meter tape. Um, it makes it feel like a 120-meter tape, or it gives it a four-hour playtime. But it's only 32K, so you have a a 16K maximum, it's basically the same quality as FM radio. But who cares? I mean, if you have an archive of something, it's better than nothing. And 32K sounds great to my ears. Anyway, uh, there was another program I wanted to mention here on the way. It's called VDAT. And VDAT is another GUI driven program. It sort of worked, sort of didn't work. I got it to work for a while and I dumped two, three or four DATs on to the DDS drive, onto my hard drive. It sort of worked, but not so great. So, about three months ago, this guy comes along on Dat Heads to Wave on the Yahoo group. This German guy, and he just mentions, it's his first post ever, and he just mentions offhand, he goes, you know, I wonder why you have never talked about the program Wave Dat. It's from Japan. I immediately emailed him back. I said, what are you talking about? I've never heard of this. Well, lo and behold, something great out of Japan once again. Who developed the Dat? Who developed digital audio tape to start with, the Japanese, this Japanese guy wrote this program, his name is Ehu, E-F-U, and uh, this is the program, it's called WaveDAT, and this is the GUI, there's how it starts up, this is version 123E, and that, my friends, is the, is the uh, interface for WaveDAT, it is really, really feature laden, there's my drive, there's the SCSI ID. Here's the absolute time, program time, run time. There's so many features in this. Here's the setup, which is really, uh, it's really uh, full of features. Uh, there's, it'll count errors. It'll count read errors, absolute time errors. Um, you can have it, you can have it go to a certain amount of errors, certain number of errors before it stops the read. Um, De-emphasis, a bunch of features I don't use. Here's you can set up the different sound. You can use a different um, sound card, a different way of uh, transferring it. And finally, this is all for the um, playback. This turns your DDS drive 
into a DAT deck that plays back, uh, I would say, arguably, a lot more feature-laden than any DAT deck that was ever out there, although there were a lot, especially way cheaper. Also, the Seek functions are really robust on this. Um, this program retails for about $45 for a shareware. Um, he'll, uh, Ahu will send you a... Uh, he'll send you a license for it that will unlock it from five minute mode. It can record, it can, uh, it does a lot. Anyway, let's listen to what it sounds like. Here's my, um, now I can seek on this. Watch, I'll just double click on any spot. Well, I thought I could. Oh, wait, here. Double click, there. Search. It's going to go to this spot on the tape and it's going to start playing back my. Uh, master of the McPunk Brothers at the Kelowna Bluegrass Festival in at the Wildwood Bluegrass Festival in Kelowna, Kelowna, Iowa. Here we go. So it's finding it. The the Connor, you can hear the drive working there. It found it, and it's gonna. It's not not quite as quick as a regular audio dat deck, but anybody who knows what I'm, who's been in this game knows. Look, there we go. Play. Okay, so there's all kinds of... There, I got a little... Okay, so that's my... Um, I've got a little clipping on there. I think I recorded the level too high. That's just my master. Anyway, you got this all kinds of... This really cool uh, readout here that shows the... Shows the... Uh, just shows the audio. Uh, as it's being played back, and well, the feature, I, the way I use it, I put it in uh, playback to file. Uh, you have a choice of playing it back to a sound device, so you can listen to it while you're playing it back, or you just name the file and it dumps it into a wave, or dumps it into an image file, and uh, the image file can then be cloned to another DAT, or um, I think it's just a wave file that can also be opened up as a wave, or can be cloned to a CD. Anyway. Let me show you about this. Let me show you how this program works with two decks. So, to the other end of our geek den man cave basement. Now, this setup here. This is a. Uh, this is just an old PC that I got off FreeCycle. You know, um, actually, no. Mike gave me this PC. Thank you. Um, I've got a. Here's my SCSI card down here in a PCI slot. And uh, it comes out of here. This is a uh, just a regular SCSI cable. Now, I've got a variety, kind of a mess of SCSI whatever here. But just to show you, it doesn't have to be pretty. This works. This setup works, and it happens to be kind of funny looking. Now, up here, oh, camera person. Here are two Sony decks. These are also really popular. The SDT9000. A lot of people, that's okay, a lot of people um, use this deck. Now, I've got a regular, uh, oh, this is going to take forever to boot up. Well, okay, so look at this big stack of dats here. This is just from a couple weeks, and all of these are dumped to waves on my computer. Look at this, little Robert Crumb art, the Mamas and the Papas, the almost true story of the Mamas and the Papas. All of these tapes were made by were I would say lovingly made by collectors all over the world and and uh, they were all traded for stuff I had at one point I had six audio dat decks uh, all hooked together with optical cables and I was cloning um, cloning dats I lived in Tokyo at the time and I would clone big stacks of dats and send them to people and and uh, it's just addictive all this uh, the collecting all this material this is all cool music, you know. Anybody who has a collection like this recognizes these tapes, and some of you probably made these tapes for me. I don't know who's going to see this. Anyway, let's let's uh, boot this up quick before the battery dies on the camera. Now, here is uh, WaveDat on this machine. I'll start up one iteration of WaveDat, and start up another iteration of WaveDat, and it automatically finds the other... Here it comes. Where is it? There. It finds the other iteration. Look, 4-4 on the SCSI ID. 
and four zero on the SCSI ID. This program is amazing, and I just can't thank this guy enough for having written it. It kind of it was kind of a labor of love. If you his uh, documentation is written in Japanese, but it says uh, that it describes basically what I've said that the that the DAT medium is dead, and that uh, but people still want a way to play back these tapes. Anyway, with two iterations of this program, you can clone from one deck to another. Actually, with one iteration, you can clone from one deck to another. I doubt that I'll ever use that feature, and the reason I made this video is because I doubt that I'll ever use any of this equipment. After I get these DATs transferred, this is probably all going to some other collector, or it's all going to go on to eBay. But anyway, that's how you transfer DATs to your hard drive. I'll, I have a 2 terabyte hard drive here that will probably hold my whole 1,000 hour, or my 1,000 DAT setup. One DAT is about 1.3 gigabytes of uh, material at 44K or 48K, and maybe a little bit more at 32K. That's a four hours of stuff. When you take the 1.3 gigabytes, if that's a full DAT, if you condense that down and put it at a high quality, um, encode it into a high quality flack, that'll give you about uh, 600, and, 600 to 700 megabytes of lossless compressed music. That's what I plan to do with all my DATs. So that's my DAT setup. That's my DDS to WAVE setup. Thanks. Good luck. Ew. Howdy. I want to show you my DAT tape setup and my basically my live music archive and how I've transferred everything from DAT tapes to FLAC files using DDS drives. Okay. It's, it's actually... Bloody blah blah blah. Bloody blah blah, blah blah. I want to talk about the thing because it's bloody. And then blah. I go up here and go. Blah 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 blah. I'll get off the treadmill, but. Blah blah blah. blah, blah that's a thing. Oh, we then it's a white balance here. though. Then that it takes a long time for the white balance to catch up again. I'm not worried about that. That those aspects of it. Okay, because it took you, about three seconds to get you out of darkness just there. That's kind of okay. I don't know. Okay. Unless you want to do a slower one, go down. Yeah, I, I will, I'll slowly pan there mostly while you're talking and then even just okay. go down there for you because you said you don't want to be... Hi, this is my music archive and I want, this video is to introduce... Let's start over.